How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with a little bit of mystery beers. Not just any mystery beer, mind you. A little bit of European flair up in this piece, courtesy of my boy Thomas. Thomas Open Beer Reviews. Go check him out. He is uh, from the old Dutch Beer Collective. And apparently he likes to send me Pilsner. Clean, crisp, classically well-made Pilsner. That is, yeah. The thickest, darkest motor oil you've ever seen in your life. Yeah, this is dark. Dark as dark could be. Um, it's a stout. Who knows what kind of stout. We'll find out. Uh, really horribly written my name on there with this kind of crazy packing tape. It's going to be a nightmare to take off, so that's going to be pretty fun. Beer-wise, yeah, that's a big, huge burly stout. Um, Russian Imperial stout. Big, huge double-digit ABV stout. There's no way this thing is not double digits. Let's see if you can get a nose doesn't really have a huge nose on it, to be perfectly honest with you, though. It has this kind of richness to it, a little bit of milk stout vibes, but not heavily on a lactose, almost like a heavily oated uh, kind of beer. I'm not getting a ton of bittering, a little bit of chocolate that's kind of ranging from like a, a semi-sweet, subtly milk chocolate kind of chocolate, all the way down to the baker's chocolate. And maybe even like a little bit of like a syrup, like a black strap molasses kind of based syrup kind of going on. Done and done. Let's dive in. Cheers. So it's much more bittering in the taste than it is in the actual nose. And the nose you really don't get much as far as bittering goes. That leads me directly into Russian Imperial Stout range. Because I think I'm getting a ton of like a bittering from a roasted malt component. But at the same token, I believe, you know, there's a decent amount of hops going on in this also. I think it's a base beer. I don't think there's much to it outside of a core four. If you told me there was something like, you know, fucking walnuts or something super subtle in there, I'm not going to get angry at it. Even a small dose of coffee I'd be on board with, but it, it would all be kind of like I've gotten those kind of vibes from Core 4 beer that leans a little coffee like before. I don't know. I don't know. There's something about it. There's something elevated, but beyond that sweetness, I still want to lean into a little bit of kind of a molasses thing thrown in there. But it's not too crazy. Let's put it this way. I think this is delicious. It's, uh, you know what this comes off to me like? Mmm. Man, was, is it that beer? I don't think it's that beer. I could be wrong, but this reminds me a lot of the Mullins Rasputin, or their cease and desist. But I don't think the Mullen fucks with... No, the Mullen fucks with cans now. But that's, uh... Yeah, that's just kind of how it comes off for me. So it comes off as a 12.3% Russian Imperial Stout or molasses. I'm going to say it. I'm going to say molasses because I believe there's something in it um, outside of the base malt of the beer. Done and done. It's not a barrel. It's not spirit. It's definitely kind of some kind of syrup based. I don't think it's not. If this is uh, maple syrup, then uh, my palate's hot garbage. Well, it already is, but it's going to be even more hot garbage. So 12.3% 12, 12 Imperial Stout. They probably won't say Russian Imperial Stout, but I'm calling it a Russian Imperial Stout with with like a soft dose of like a, uh, of like a, a molasses in there. So I'll take that little piece of syrup off because that really held everything together. Okay, can we find the beginning? That's the key with these kind of crazy packages. And since it's paper and it's crazy packing tape, I don't think I'm going to be able to, like, just kind of brute force myself into it. So, you know what? You guys get to sit here and watch me kind of pick at this goddamn thing that I will never, ever, ever get open. Actually, no, I might be able to brute force. Oh, there we go. Well, there's the top. We're off to a good start there. 
Old timey eyes, baby. Gotta find that beginning. Almost there. Almost there. Oh, this has to keep going down the bottom of some bitch. Okay. There we go. Now this we can just tear off. That wasn't nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. So it's a black can. Okay. And then we are sitting on a... Bum, 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 bum. Crooked Spider Russian Imperial Stout. Wasserman's Crappery from Netherlands. Um, let's see. It says here, it says... He oh, I can't read that. That's not in English. Um, let's see. Distinctively different and exciting flavors. Um, only 9.6. Wow, I was way off in the ABV level. I don't know what any of that says there. So if somebody over there, Thomas, or somebody in, in the old Deutschland wants to uh, translate that for me. Wow. I know it was Russian Imperial style. There's an added sweetness to it. I don't think there's anything but core four ingredients in this. I wouldn't be able to tell you anyway because I can't read anything on here. But I'm pretty sure it's just a core four beer. And it's very tasty. Very well done. Um, it has a nice kind of sweetness to go along with that bittering. It, the bittering part of it is very elevated. So that's why, you know, I kind of lent, leaned into the Russian Imperial style portion of the show. But there was a big sweetness. That sweetness is really what drove me towards that 12 and change percent. This being 9.6 percent and being this sweet, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I mean, even if you shoot for this and you, and you, you don't fully attenuate, it's not going to be this sweet. So I'm really curious to see where that added sweetness comes from. That's probably... Just a core four beer, but I'm very interested um, about how they can derive that level of sweetness and that level of impact at a paltry 9.6%. It's a fun beer, tasty beer. I dig it. And the mouthfeel is dense. I didn't really talk about that. It's got those super thick uh, seas going on and a very tasty beer. Very fun. Thank you very much, Thomas. Very cool of you. Let's talk about it. Is it one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts I've had as of late? Yeah. I mean, listen, I kind of, um, you know, I associate it with uh, Rasputin or Cease of Desist. It's probably one of my favorite Russian Imperial Stouts up there. Second tier level stuff. It's not Black Albert level or Courage level stuff for me. But second tier, and I mean that in a positive way. Very tasty stuff. Valued availability? No idea. You guys are going to have to tell me over there and, and uh, overseas and leave you with if you like what we like this beer. If you like tried and true Russian Imperial Stout, but you want it at a more drinkable package? Do you know what I mean? Like, because you're talking about sub 10% Russian Imperial Stout, about this impactful at that ABV level. It's pretty impressive. So you like your bigger beers, but you want a little bit less ABV. This one's got everything you want, baby. So there you go. Another review in the books. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much again for uh, Thomas opening all the uh, Netherlands dudes for sending beers over. Very appreciative. From Remy to Douglas to all you guys. It's pretty awesome of you. Thank you very much. Go check them out um, over there in the old Dutch Beer Collective. Hopefully you guys um, enjoyed this down there if you want to talk about it. Massive beers. If you want to check me out doing the social media stuff, Beer Massif. If you want to check me out doing the podcasting thing. And hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of a yeah, RAS right now. Hope we'll see you next time. Cheers.